Well, it's been out of stock pretty much everywhere since I put out the last guide, but I finally got my hands on a three and a half inch composite display from Adafruit. So now I have everything I need to give you guys part three of the Game Boy Zero guide. Ever since the Adafruit screens went out of stock and then stayed out of stock for a couple of weeks, I've had lots of people asking if that's the only screen that we can use for this project. The good news is no, that's not the only screen you can use with it. The bad news is knowing which screens work well with it isn't always obvious. A lot of people from the forums have been trying out different backup camera screens, and we found that even some of them that look identical on the outside are completely different on the inside, and some of them play nice with it and some of them don't. There are also loose screens like this Adafruit one that you can buy, but I haven't been able to try any of those yet. I actually did a blog post all about this and showed a few other options that you have. So check that out if you can't find the Adafruit one and you're not sure what to do. Today we'll be mounting the screen in the front of the case, modifying its controller board so it'll run off of 5 volts, creating a breakout board to adjust the screen from the battery compartment, then we'll use these screw posts that you hopefully saved from the first guide to make a bracket that'll let us use the original screws and screw holes when we put it back together. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is disconnect the screen from the controller board. Be really careful because if you damage this ribbon cable, you're pretty much just out of luck. You can see a little bit of the bezel around the edges, so if that bothers you, you can either use some electrical tape around the edges or mask off the inner part and use some spray paint. The Adafruit screen actually comes with a screen protector out of the box, which is perfect for spray painting. Just make sure that you mask off the ribbon cable first. Alright, let's modify this so it will work off of 5 volts just like our Raspberry Pi. First we're going to remove this regulator right here, then we're going to remove this connector right here just to make the board a little bit thinner, and then we're going to connect a couple of these pins here to the power pins right here. Check out the description for a link to a blog post that will go along with this video where I'll put high res images of everything that you need to do. Alright, so this should run off of 5 volts now, but it's a good idea to go ahead and try it out. Uh, you can use any 5 volt input in any composite video source, uh, and actually a really good way to try it out is with the Raspberry Pi itself. To test it on the Pi, we can use these pads on the back. This one is 5 volts, this is ground, this will be your white wire, and this will be your yellow one. Now in order to get any kind of picture out of it, you'll have to have an SD card that has an OS on it. If you need help setting that up, check out the blog post, I'll have instructions there. And there we go. When we mount this board behind the screen, we're not going to be able to reach these buttons anymore to adjust the contrast and brightness. So if that doesn't bother you, then you can skip this next part. But what we're going to do is essentially extend these buttons and create a little breakout board that we can reach from the battery compartment. To do this, I'll attach a few tactile switches to a piece of perf board and then wire up these pins with corresponding pins on these buttons. If you don't have any perf board, that's fine. You can just straighten out the pins on the tactile switches and glue them down to a little piece of plastic. The bottom left pin on each button is ground and they're all connected, so we only need one of them. And then we'll have wires going to the bottom right pin on each button.
go, now we'll be able to put this in the battery compartment and control these buttons from there. Be sure to test the buttons out before gluing them down. You can do that either by attaching the screen and testing them out, or by using a voltmeter like I showed you in the last guide. The hardest part of mounting the screen is just making sure that it's completely straight and centered. Uh, depending on where exactly you put your buttons, you may have to have it just a little bit off-center vertically to make sure that there's room for the buttons in the back. And once you're happy with the positioning, just put a couple of dots around the edges to hold it in place while we put the rest of the glue down. Alright, once that cools, that screen should be in there pretty securely, it's not going anywhere. Uh, hot glue may not be the cleanest solution, but it's fast, it's strong, but at the same time it's easy enough to cut out and move something if you need to. Okay, now for this bracket that I keep mentioning. Since we had to remove the top screw post to make room for the screen, we can no longer use the screw holes in the back of the case. To fix this, we'll take a strip of metal or some other strong material, it should be about 83 millimeters long and we'll fuse the screw post to it using epoxy. The screw post should be right at 74 millimeters from center to center. You need to cut the screw posts so that they're six millimeters tall, and then you'll want to reshape them as well. If you make them pill-shaped like this, then they'll resist turning better. And then I also added a couple of notches on either side so they resist being pulled out as well. So first mark where your screw posts need to go, and then stick them down with just a little dot of hot glue just to hold them in place. Next, hold it up to the back of the case just to make sure everything lines up. It may take a few tries, and it's okay if it's not perfectly straight. All that we really care about is that the holes line up. Alright, so if you're sure that you've got it 74 millimeters from center to center, it's time to make it permanent with some epoxy. After 24 hours or so, the epoxy should be pretty much rock hard. You can trim off the excess and give it a test by taking a screw and slowly and gently seeing if it'll go in without the screw post budging at all. If it does, you probably just need to wait a little bit longer. Next we need to figure out exactly where to place it, so to do that just set it down, put the back on, look down the screw holes and see if they line up. If they don't, keep making adjustments and putting it back on until they line up perfectly. Once you've got it positioned, put a couple of small dots of glue down just to hold it in place. Check and make sure that it lines up one last time. And then put the rest of the glue on. Once that's done, you should be able to test putting it together using the same screw posts that you removed in the first guide, which is pretty cool. Alright, that's it for this part. We're not going to mount the controller board just yet. We'll wait until next time after we mount the speaker, headphone jack, amplifier. We'll put the controls back in there. Then we'll also mount the LNR buttons, micro USB port, the on and off switch, and the external USB port. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys next time.